Welcome back. This is going to be our part two of the Azure OpenAI Studio overview. In the first section, we talked about the management side of things, how we can create custom models, deploy base models, build content filters, manage quotas, and really look at all the things that happen behind the scenes on a management side. In this one, we're going to focus more on the fun stuff, on the development, on the testing, how do we use this as a playground or a sandbox. So we're going to start with this playground over here on the left. We have three options, Dolly, Completion, Chat. I'm going to start with the Dolly one and then work our way up. So on Dolly, this is the image generation models. And the first thing you'll notice is it says only available in East US. Well, lucky us, I have an East US resource spun up ready to go for this. How convenient. And what we're going to do is we're going to really kind of give it a prompt. And then we're going to ask it to generate photos. So before I give it this prompt, and we're probably going to use this, this basic umbrella one, because I think it's pretty cool. So we're going to go in here to settings and we can change how many images we want it to create one to three obviously you do three it's going to take slightly longer but let's say let's just do one image and then we can change the size of this you know large medium or small so we're going to do one and let's make it a medium one and we can save our parameters inside of here and ever's going to click try it out now we're going to use this umbrella one that they've given us as a template all right. Well, I guess what happened when I when I hit that is it went ahead and used two because that was what was in the prompt to begin with. But to notice, it gave me two different options here, two different umbrella options at the beach that I could use. I have some options down here to copy the prompt, to give a new image, to download this one, to show the code behind it, or just to delete it. So let's say, actually, I like this one on the left better. We're just going to ask it to, to do a new one over here. Notice I'm asking it to, you know, generate a new image. But we're going to keep this one over here on the right. It's not going to delete it for us automatically. So a different one, interesting take on it. We lost the beach, but at least it kind of gives us the same, uh, you know, multicolored umbrella that we were going for in the disposable camera kind of lens or view on this. So let's say I like these two. We're going to delete this last one. And let's look at this. All right, so I can now, you know, copy the prompt, which would kind of be the main thing here if I wanted to see what this looked like to create it. You know, I could download this one or I could view the code. So let's see the code behind this. I think this is really important for integrating these things into your solutions, whether they're new or old solutions. We have a very basic structure in here. Uh, you know, we give it our OpenAI type, which is Azure, our base behind it, our API version that we're using, and then the keys that go with this. And then in our response, you can see it's a very simple call. It's openai.image.create. We're going to say, hey, this is the prompt that I want you to use. Generate me an image based on this. I want it in this size, and I want one image where n equals one. So I can go here and, and then run this and get this image URL. So it'll give us essentially what this image looks like in URL format that we can then go grab. So we can easily grab this code and bring it into some of our other platforms and use it there. But a very neat tool, it's still in preview, so there is more to come on this, but it is a very good starting point uh, basically to play around with and kind of get familiar with this as they continue to make it better as we go through this. Let's hop back over to my other instance where we're going to look at completions now. So the completions is really where we can interact with our GPT-3, our embedding models, and some of those um, kind of fundamental models. If we want to play with GPT-4, which we will in a second, we'll have to go to the chat playground to do it. But if we're looking at just the three models, we can go in here and you see I have a few deployments out here. I've got a 3.5 Turbo, I've got a Code 1, I've got a text analytics one and then just kind of a, a test one out here. And then we have these examples that we can mess with. You know, if we wanted to see what a chatbot would look like or generate insights, we'll just go ahead and click on this one. If we want to generate insights based on a paragraph of text, it'll give us this kind of sample paragraph. And then it'll, you know, give us the insights on that based on this right here. So we can do that. We can change these. We're going to go to the email one, though. And before I click generate on this, we're going to look at the parameters briefly. So temperature out here really controls randomness and some creativity. It's a zero to one scale. If we set it to zero, it's going to be very uh, source of truth dependent. It's not going to be very creative. It's going to stick to the straight road all you know the entire time. Uh, if we go to one, we're going to say, hey, you know, be super creative. Don't worry about being deterministic or repeatable in your responses. We have our max length in tokens. So out here, think of um, roughly a thousand tokens is 800 words. And I know that may be like a weird concept for a lot of people, but a lot of how these are built and priced on is that a token 
per token or per thousand token rate. So on this, you know, 350 tokens, we're going to, uh, you know, upskill this to, you know, 2,500 because I want it to give me a decent email out of this. We have stop sequences in here where we can say, uh, you know, I want you to stop considering this thing the prompt when you encounter a line break or when you encounter, you know, this sequence of characters. We can define that here. We have top probabilities, which we can go into and change. It's similar to randomness, but this one more controls um, the selection for likelier tokens. So basically, the higher we make this, uh, the closer to one we make this, it's going to potentially look at tokens that are further away from where we came from. The closer to zero we get, it's going to try and pick tokens that are the most similar to what we started with. It also says in here, try to not change both at the same time, but to do one at a time to see how it interacts. It's a very good tip to use going forward. Um, don't just blindly change these without knowing what you're doing. I'd recommend starting with only changing one or the other and then going from there. The last view on here are frequency, presence, and best of. So best of only applies to a few models, but some models give us multiple responses back and we can say, give me the one that has the highest probability, you know, the best match to what we want to, uh, what our question is. And then frequency and presence penalties are more based around, do I want to penalize it for giving me the same tokens, you know, over and over again? For some cases, this is good. For some cases, this is bad. So it's really a case-by-case -case basis on that. And the last two are pre-response and post-response text. If we want it to always start with this or always end in this, we can do that. So you'll notice right here, we're going to use this example for generating an email for these new AI-powered headphones. You know, we're going to give it the target audience in here tech savvy music lovers and i want it to be friendly and exciting and we're going to ask it to do two things the first is give us the subject line of this email and the second is what should the body of the email be and we notice at the bottom here we already have a token counter at 77 so it's we're giving it a lot of room to generate it it will not use all 2500 of these um, but at least we're giving it the ability to if it wanted to so you'll notice here it's going to go ahead and start kicking off giving us our subject line here you know experience the future with our ai powered headphones and then it's going to give us the body of the email now you're noticing here that it's not giving me one blurb at you know at one time it kind of drip feeds this to us and that's because it's creating this it's now looking at what tokens do we want to put up next to create these this next chunk of text this next chunk of words it's going to then create this and kind of craft this email for us at all times, keeping in mind the temperature of, of this, saying you can be creative in your response, your probabilities in this, saying you can kind of deviate from the previous tokens you just saw to give us a more um, a more creative response, more liberty in how it creates this. So it's, it's an email out here. I'm going to go and just add a couple line breaks in there for us. It gives us this thing we can craft, we can send out. You know, we can put in our name. We can have it. You know, give it our actual company name. We can give it our name, and we can have it build this email for us. We could change anything we wanted in here and have it generate potentially a different response. So it's a very, very neat tool for sandboxing some of this stuff and just trying this out. What's neat next now is we can go into the view code side of things. And you're going to notice the theme in all of these, whether it's Dolly, completions, or chat, we can go in here and view how this was created. So just like on the Dolly side, we've got our base, our API base, our version, our API key. And instead of being OpenAI image create, it's now completion create. So we pass it our engine, and then we pass it our prompt. So essentially what you see behind this right here, write a product launch email, is what you're seeing right here. This is the prompt we're asking it to do. You know, do this, and then um, kind of give us the response back from that. So you can notice right here our parameters as well, temperature, tokens, top P, everything that we've put in here, we can now see that. So if we wanted to use this code, it's kind of generated for us and ready to go. Now, I think what is most exciting about all of this is the, the chat playground, where it's really the GPT-4 models that we're going to mess with. Let me clear out my, my text in here. I'm going to start with the right-hand side on this, on our configuration. On our deployments, you have to have deployed one of these models to use it in here. So I've got a GPT-4. This is an 8K model. I've got a GPT-4 32K, and then I've got a 3.5 Turbo if I want to test in here as well. You'll see session settings. This is past messages. So if we're carrying on a conversation, we want it to include the last 20 messages so it has that context. It knows we've already talked about. This is also um, something you can use when you deploy these things. You can have it saved somewhere else. You can include a lot more than 20. But just for a, a sandbox environment, 
you can look at the last few messages inside of here. For the parameters, the exact same ones that we just saw on the completion side, so max response, although this time we are now, you know, this is an 8K model, so let's just put this at 7 for kicks, temperature, top P, our stop sequences, and then our penalties inside of here. Looking at the left-hand side of things, we have our assistant set up. And this is really where we can define what we want this system to do. So you'll notice this is a very basic thing. You, you summarize articles for users. We can load a template in here. Let's have it be you know, a marketing assistant for us. It'll craft this template in here of saying, you're a marketing assistant. You help create content ideas. You do this, that, and the other. We can also tell it what not to do. If you don't know the answer, you just respond by saying that. You know, We can be very... Um, very liberal in how we do this. We can give it very fine lines to fall into. We can tell it to be more broad. It is very, uh, very much a creative process in what's called prompt engineering in generating these things to give us what we want. A lot of the value in these systems comes from generating the right prompts, not from asking the right questions inside of here. A lot of it is how we develop these, how we make these exactly what we want them to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a blank one in here, an uh, empty one. And I'm going to say, you are a um, AI system type that summarizes the users. So very basic. Obviously, we would do a lot more than, than this. But for this simple demo, we're just going to put this in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the GPT-5 trademark off of the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office that uh, OpenAI just put in on July 18th. We've got a link post coming about this here soon. But I'm just going to grab this text because there's a lot in here, a lot of stuff that you know most people might not understand. I'm going to say, you know, with this system in mind, I want you to summarize this. I'm just going to paste this entire thing in here. I'm going to change this back up to 5,000. And we're going to let it do its thing. So notice it's going to give us a, a very you know lengthy paragraph right here potentially on what this is. You know this is great. It does summarize the full article. But what if we wanted it to do more? What if we wanted it to top three to five bullet points, use less than ten words per bullet? We'll save that, and I'm going to put this text back in here to see what it does. Give it a second to think about it. While it's doing that, I'm going to go to the view code in here, similar to how we just saw in the completions and the dolly. We can go in here and do view code. We can see what exactly we did to create this. So instead of it being openai.image or .completion, we can go in here and now it's chat completion. And you'll notice a different format for this message. It's no longer prompt. It's now messages where we define roles. So we have the system, what we want it to do, we have the user, what we're going to pass in, and then we're going to see at the end the assistant um, that kind of puts that back out for us, the response for that. And what it looks like it's doing is it didn't like what I did. Or, more likely scenario, is that we have other people using the system right now too, and I'm, I'm hogging all the resources, or they are. So we'll try this again. We're just going to delete this. I mean, the top three to five bullet points, the user text. That. I'm going to click stop. I think it's still generating that last one for us. Let's see if we can get this to work for us. There we go. So give me the top three to five bullet points. Use less than 10 words per bullet. And there we go right there. You know, it gave us um, the very high level overview of what this GPT-5 trademark is. Now let's say write me a an email to our development team that summarizes this and provide insight on what we should be looking for. You'll notice this right here did not take into account the system message. Because we have our past messages, our, sy our system settings inside of here. So we first given it this full thing, asked it to summarize it for us. And then in this same chat, we can go in here and say, now do this for me. And it'll give me a full email to our development team that talks about what this is, that talks about GPT-5. So I hope this has been insightful for you to kind of see what Azure OpenAI can do and how it can be integrated with your existing systems or new systems going forward.
Thank you.